Today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a Chevy Express van, or sometimes built into a bus. Anyways, it's the van chassis cluster 2005 is what I've been told this is. Customer states, it is dead. Well, let's find out. Okay, power is applied. We got blinkers, check engine light. Uh, really no backlighting either. Looks like all of the backlighting is burned out and there's no odometer uh, and there was no uh, zeroing out of any of the stepper motors. I'll do a reboot one more time. Yeah, so the only thing operational is some of the analog lights. The rest of the digital stuff that requires a microprocessor is dead and non-responsive. So, yes, the customer is experiencing some problems. Uh, let's dare, tear in and find out what's going on. And before I forget, there will be a giveaway after I check out and review Secure's new soldering station. Uh, they sent me one of their portable soldering stations a few months ago. And it's probably one of the best $35 soldering irons I've ever had. It uses the T12 tips. Anyways, this is their new soldering station or soldering handle. Uh, this They call this the Nano, so I guess it's going to be super small. So we will check this out. I'm going to use it to repair today's cluster, hopefully. That is the plan. And then I'm going to give it away at the end of the video because I don't need it. Now... With this cluster as a 2005, and I think what's going on with it is, ooh, USB. Look at that. I think this is the first time I've seen one come with a USB wall wart. Cool. It's not USB-C, but whatever. Really <laughs> little tiny itty bitty sponge for the little bitty itty tray. Uh, don't need this right now anyways. Let's get back to the cluster. Um, 2005 year GM did some funny stuff with their voltage regulator circuit. They went from a simple uh, voltage regulator to an adjustable 8 pin jobber uh, to make the 5 volt rail um, that needed a voltage divider to set the voltage. And I've seen fractured joints on the voltage divider resistors that controls the 5 volt voltage regulator. And when that happens, uh, she's just dead. So maybe that's what's going on with today's cluster. Maybe it's just a fractured uh, joint on a resistor divider, maybe. We'll see. All right, get ready to call the cops. Here is a warranty void if removed label. This is from D&D Speedometer. They're actually a local outfit to me. Now, this has not been opened since they have repaired it, so I'm going to be breaking the seal. I'm guessing they have replaced the lamps at some point in time. It's usually the first thing to need service on these vehicles, especially these vehicles that are used for a million miles. Service vehicles, anyways, is what I'm referring to. Losing my stick. Put that over here. Okay, now power circuit is gonna be one of these eight pin chips. Not that one, that looks like it's a transceiver. I don't think that. Okay, so this circuit is maybe not quite the 2005, I think. I can't read the print. I'll pull it up on the microscope, but I think this is the transceiver. Yeah, it's got the little inductor. This is the transceiver. This is the EEPROM. Here's the microprocessor. And usually the voltage regulation is over here, but I don't see an 8-pin that I was expecting. I do see that D&D reflowed the resistors for the vacuum fluorescent display. And these bulbs don't look original. Yeah, those are not original solder joints, so they did replace the bulbs at some point in time, but it looks like they're all burned out now. I'm going to power it up one more time. Yeah, there's not a single backlighting bulb working. I'm going to guess that we have... Usually this will pop things to life when there's a fractured joint. 
Oh, I might actually have to dig into this one to find out what's going on. She hasn't popped to life yet. Hmm, it's going to make me work for it. Usually what I like to do first, just to make sure that power is actually getting into the board. So we'll do that. Uh, I'm going to start at the... Uh, Diodes, there's going to be a couple diodes. One diode will be like battery continuous power. The other diode, diode will be switched ignition power. Got one diode right here. And oh, helps if I make sure the power is turned on. All right, so we have 12 volts coming into this diode. And the, oh, let's see here, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, so here's the in. 13.4, little loss coming through. There's the 12 coming out, so that diode's fine. That looks like a diode, but that's actually a resistor right there. There. This is a resistor. I gotta look to see what that's tied into, but the other diode's right here. So, as you can see, there's a 13, there's a 12, so power's coming in and passing through the diode. So we know both powers are good. We know the ground is good. But looking here, this component, which looks like a diode, but it's actually not. It's a resistor. But I see some funny business. Take a look. Focus. Trying to get some light and stuff in there. But right here, there is a trace that looks damaged. You see that? I see... Damage trace. Put this on continuity. And see if I can get a view so you guys can see what I'm doing. But it looks like the trace goes from here to here. And there's no continuity, so there is a break. There is a break in there. Can't get a good view of it, but it's right there. I'll pull it up on the microscope. And we're going to patch it up and see if that changes anything. Something might be shorted. There's a reason why that trace blew. Traces don't blow just because they feel like it. They blow because there's something wrong. I'm gonna set up the new soldering iron. We'll uh, get this thing going. And pull it up on the microscope. And we're gonna run a trace jumper. All right, so that end is USB-C. Yeah, it is, it is small. It's like, it's small. Ooh, tips, more than one. God, these things are tiny. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's like a cute little J-hook. Maybe I'll use that with a little tiny uh, flathead. That's what it came with, three tips. Crazy. Yeah, these are cartridge style. If you're still using old 900M style tips, do yourself a favor and get a cartridge style. I wonder if I'm going to have to pull that screw out and nah, just shove it in. Yeah, that thing's tiny. Oop, I don't want that tip. I want the J-tip. This guy right here. Okay, plug it in. Tin it up. Uh, I'll probably have to figure out how to turn it on. It says stop right now. Is this, is this the go button? Maybe I gotta push and hold. There, now it says work. Good. I like to see my tips at around 350. No, it says 250C in the corner, but it's going to the 300, so. Let's see what it settles out at. Yeah, it looks like right around 300 is where it's going to stay. I got to see if I can figure out how to... There, 350. That's what I like. Kind of boosts it up to 400 to get it up to temp fast. I think that's what's happening. Then maybe it'll settle down to the 3s or 350. I don't know. Maybe I have to read the directions. 
but the tip is tending up nicely now so I can use it to get to work. Okay, so the blown open foil has been patched up. Now, like I mentioned earlier, foil usually blows open for a reason. There's too much current going through there for some reason. Um, that blown foil goes to this third pin, third pin over and down, which is the serial bus communication wire. So. Why would there be current going through there? There really shouldn't be any kind of sizable current for that wire. Um, yeah, let me put, just put this on ohms. Uh, so this, I'm just attached to the serial bus wire, which usually is done for communication. And it's three ohms to ground. That doesn't sound right, and it's 10 ohms. 10 ohms to positive and 3 ohms to ground. That sounds way too low. Um, I wonder if... And that just goes right... It, it goes right to this little inductor here. Signal passes through that and into the transceiver chip. I wonder if that is somehow shorting to ground. So I think next I'm just going to pull, pull this chip and see if the impedance goes to normal levels. Hmm... Okay, with that transceiver chip removed, will the impedance change on that uh, on that wire? This is the 56585 chip, which GM uses in a lot of their clusters. So I'm still on resistance. No, it's still three ohms. What the hell is pulling this thing to ground? Huh. Well, I guess I got to keep on digging. That wasn't it. So I've made some unusual progress. I found the 3 ohm short to ground. And well, it turned out it was the 3 ohm resistor pulling it to ground. I don't think that's right. That just sounds too low for that bus input wire. But anyways, I moved the resistor off to the side so it's no longer a 3 ohm short to ground. And it seems to have taken care of most of its problems. Now, as you saw there, the stepper motor zeroed out, which is good news. We have life at the microprocessor. And if I connect up uh, the data bus, let me do it, reboot it here. You'll see, look at that, it's it, communications working. Um, so the 56585, the serial bus circuit is fine. It can communicate. See, I'll connect it up again and it should... Yeah, see the needles go back up to where it's uh, set to go to. Anyways, good signs. Power's up, stepper motor zero out, data bus works. But the display is doing some weird nonsense down here. So maybe the display chip underneath the vacuum fluorescent display has failed and shouldn't have anything to do with that data bus trace blowing out, but... I don't know. I think I'm going to have to go after that chip under here. Yes, I will have to go after that uh, vacuum fluorescent display chip. You hear that? That chip is so hot, it's sizzling and boiling away the rubbing alcohol. So, yep, we got a short on that chip. It definitely should not be getting that hot. All right, time to pull the display. I use the Hacko FR300 to suck the solder out of every hole or every pin of this VFD display. So now this guy should come out. And there's the chip. 
I have to find a match. I gotta find a donor board. I'm thinking maybe a trailblazer or something like that that has similar uh, display that combined the Prindle and odometer in one. Let's go see if I can track down such a good chip. To answer my own question, yes, the Trailblazer does use the same chip. This is the Trailblazer uh, donor board, which is the non-driver uh, information display. This is just the trip version of the Trailblazer cluster. But as you can see, it has the same 1624-5294 display chip as this one that has blown up. That's also the 1624-5294. But I'm not going to be using the Trailblazer for a donor. But if, if you notice, it has the same amount of display. It's just split up in two. So the Prindle's up top, odometer's down below. So it's just a split version of what this cluster uses, which where they just combine it all in one. It has the same hour and kilometer indicator and the AB trip. It's all there. It's just in one package for this cluster and split for the Trailblazer. Same chip, but I'm not going to use it because I have a, I think this is a C6500 uh, donor board. This is out of the Chevy dump truck version of trucks. And it has the exact same display as the express van cluster that we're trying to fix. So I'm going to steal this chip. I just feel a little more confident that it's going to be 100% compatible, even though the Trailblazer one will probably work. But this is an exact match. So this is a donor board. We're going to steal that, put it on there, cross our fingers, and hope that that makes the display be normal again. Well, no more super hot, sizzly, you know, hot chips. Let's let's uh, let's hope for that. They were nice to move the chip out of the way on this board, and they were kind of dicks and put this display chip right under the vacuum fluorescent display. All right, good work. Okay, there's the good one. And the bad one. I used the new little Nano Secure and it did a fine job. You know, for being such a tiny tip, it did a good job at putting some uh, heat into that large chip. Pretty impressive little guy so far. I'm gonna have to see how much power this is. If yeah, like I was trying to say before, if you're still using like a 900M style tip where the tip is separate from the heating element, uh, do yourself a favor and get an integrated style, you know, heater and and uh, heating element and tip integrated into one. There's so much more heat transfer that uh, that this little guy would probably have more power than like a Hakko F888D because they still use the old separate tip and heating element. Plus they're not very high power either, but I'm sure that will upset some people because that's a popular station, but they're not that great. All right, let's take one last look at them solder joints. And it uh, looks pretty good. It's all there. None of them are 
none of the pins are not connected and there's no short so I'm ready to put the vacuum fluorescent display back on. Now when I was soldering under the microscope I did accidentally bump one of these buttons and it set the temperature down to 300 but uh I heard a beep, so I know I did it, but uh, I think that's just a matter of getting used to where where to put your fingers when you're holding on to it, as long as you keep your fingers away from the buttons while you're soldering, then that won't be an issue. Yeah, again, it's doing well, considering just how small that tip is. This Here, this is the tip that I'm used to soldering with. I think it's a J03 or I don't remember what it is, but anyways, the nano tip is like one third of what I use. Come on, focus, focus. It's like one third of what I usually use. And I'm impressed that it's as, as good at getting the solder to melt as it is considering just how small the tip is. I could put in one of the larger tips, but I'm a, I don't know, I just like J-tips. I like to kind of curl the tip around the lead. Okay, I'm going to apply power. Cross your fingers for me that this display now acts like a normal display and shows the odometer and Brindle's normal. Please work, because I really hate pulling the display. Uh, power up test. Holy crap, it's a real odometer. 153K, the Brindle's normal. Thank God it freaking works. Oh, relief. I'm going to reboot it one more time. Should see the dummy lights, do the little test. I hear the step motors move, and we have odometer. Fuck yeah, it's working. All right, now I just have to figure out what the hell's going on with this three ohm resistor, which I don't think is supposed to be there. It's actually moved away right now from where it normally sits. It's disconnected. And let me just check one more time. Um, if I give it Serial bus signal, I think that oil pressure, let me just reboot one more time so the computer wakes up. That should move, yeah. So look, and there's a little underscore under the P. So it's getting communication without that stupid three ohm resistor in there, which isn't right, I don't think, but it's working. Thank God, time to clean all the flux off of this thing. Plus, man, look up. This thing is so small that it's actually smaller than my tube of flux, crazy. Anyways, oh, wait, there's specs right there. Nine volts, USB-C, that can't actually run at nine volts because the wall board it came with is just a uh, standard USB five volt. Hmm. When I connect that component back into circuit, it just kind of is not happy and goes a bit batshit crazy. Uh, so I'm not gonna connect it back up. It's working perfectly without it. In fact, I'll turn the oil pressure down to halfway and that needle should go to halfway. Yes, it's moving. You know what? Screw it. I don't know what's going on with that, but it's working. I'm going to clean this up. Let's replace these lamps. Get some lights working in this thing again. Huh? There, just bump that button again. I gotta get my fingers off of them buttons. Okay, in case you're wondering why I left these lights, this is the left blinker, that's the right blinker, and this is the cruise control. At least I think that's the cruise control. I better not make a liar out of myself. Yeah, cruise control's there. Uh, they are not on for the amount of hours that backlighting is on for. These bulbs are rated for hours. So the blinkers uh, and uh, cruise control aren't going to burn out um, like the backlighting does. Uh, anyways, let's get this prepped. 
and lay down some fresh solder for the new lamps that are going in. All right, um, looks like I didn't forget any. All right, let's give this thing an alcohol bath because I got flux all over it, especially in this area here, and this up here, and uh, I think that's all I had to mess with. So here, right here, this is that stupid component that was making the serial bus three ohms. Uh, it's normally connected from this pad to this pad. Focus phone. So I just scooched it down so it's no longer in circuit. I'm gonna leave it here just in case it's important for some reason that I don't know of. So I'm gonna leave it on the board so it can be moved back if it needs to be. But, and then here's that jumper we had to put in because of the blown foil. It continues the path down to yonder, makes its way to here, transceiver chip. Uh, let's put some lamps in. Okay, so let's let's test the data bus one more time. The serial coming in, got to do a reboot. Let's summarize this this adventurous repair that we had. Uh, so when it initially came in, it was completely dead besides the blinkers and check engine light. Uh, and for reasons that I don't completely understand, the serial bus input was shorted to ground and it blew a foil trace. And... Uh, for whatever reason, the vacuum fluorescent display driver chip blew its brains out, and those two are not related. There's, They don't share really anything in common, so it makes me wonder if maybe this vehicle suffered some sort of weird electrical problem. But uh, yeah, and every single backlighting bulb was burned out. So a bit of an, a bit of an oddball. Weird, weird things happened to this cluster, but everything's working now, uh, and this little soldering station it's pretty rad i'm giving it away uh same giveaway rules as always two days after i post the video i'll randomly select someone so if you want it just say you want it it'll be 100 percent completely free i will not charge you for shipping you must be within the lower 48 states i think that covers it yeah and uh you'll get you'll get all the goodies the extra tips Ooh, stickers to put on your bumper that and uh the brick the power brick and all that be complete thanks for watching we'll see you next time
But wait, the video's not over yet. I had a chance to talk to the vehicle owner when he came to pick up the cluster. And it turns out what had happened is he left his vehicle sit for a couple of weeks. And when he wanted to go start it, it was dead. So I think at that point he jumped it or charged it. And I think he said he ended up buying a new battery. Well, he tried all kinds of things to get it started and he couldn't. So he ended up taking it to a mechanic. And the mechanic said something is shorting the data bus to ground. Uh, he ended up replacing the main engine ECU too. He said that was also damaged. But I am speculating what maybe happened is when the mechanic realized there was a short to ground on the data bus, he may have just forced 12 volts through that to, so that way whatever was causing the short would show its face. And that's what blew the trace. The component that I thought was a resistor uh, is more than likely a Zener diode or some sort of power conditioning protection device like a Variester or something like that. It's probably a component uh, intended to help protect the circuit, but uh, in this case it failed completely. And I also want to point out that when I first powered it up, it wouldn't boot up at all. I believe the display driver chip was causing a short across one of the important power rails, but while I had it powered up after some time, that chip eventually just kind of failed in an open state. And at that point, that's when I could see the nonsense on the screen. And that's what you know gave us the clue that it was bad. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.